السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سيدي. عليكم السلام ورحمة الله. سيدي، what is our greater reality, higher conscience sound like? Sound like? Sound like you. <coughs> the sound that you hear from it is your voice. When it wants to communicate with you, it's a telepathy of your own voice talking to you. So that's why when they meditate and contemplate, they hear their voice, they hear themselves talking to themselves. So the madad, the meditation, the contemplation is to clear the energy so that it's not shaitan influencing the person to hear their own voice. But with the madad and all the practices, it's to hear the greater reality with the presence of the shaykh, the light and the love of Prophet present with them and they begin to meditate and contemplate to make their connection. The sound that they hear is their own consciousness. When you connect with your greater reality, your subconscious begins to teach you because now it's an informed being, it's a reconnected being. When they establish a strong connection, their subconscious is always connected. And that's why they say, oh subconsciously you knew that. Yeah, well if they're connected, yes, they'll always be inspired because the greater consciousness, the greater reality is continuously dressing them. So much easier to speak in these energy terms than complicated Arabic terms which they don't understand anyways. So when they think you're speaking in these sort of English terms because this is a, a language that is a great equalizer. Energy and light it's going to be able to explain every religion and malakut and the world of light, the world of the heavens. But knowledges of only the physical world, they don't explain that world and that realm. InshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Shaykh. Alaikum salaam wa rahmatullah. This is literally what I've been pondering for a long time. Thank you so much for your wisdom, Shaykh Nurjan. Your wisdom is a blessing. Thank you. Allah bless you. Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum Shaykh. Wa alaikum salaam wa rahmatullah. Is the greater soul sent into hellfire if it was not able to control the body? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Body or what happens? No, no, these lights never enter anything to hell. Hellfire is for your physical body. Yeah, hell is not, not anything to do with the, the souls. It's, I said it's called haqq. So the soul is a haqq, is, is hayy and qayyum and has nothing to do with the physical punishment. So anything that comes up of punishment is going to be applied to the physicality and the nafs of that physicality. So the, the world of light is already in the world of light and is free from, from any of these darknesses and, and satanic attack. There's no satanic attack in that realm. Satanic attack is only in the realm of mulk. So that which is in the mulk, it has to be ashes to ashes and dust to dust. It will be resolved in the mulk. That which is from malakut, it returns to malakut. So, inna lillahi wa ilayhi rajiun has a deep reality is that you don't come from Allah, you're interpreting and saying it wrong. You don't come from Allah and to Allah you're not going back. You're Allah's creation but you're going back into an ocean 
divine the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You're not sharif with Allah Anyone think that they're going to die and go back and, and be one with Allah that's a big… Uh, is a big shirk, is a big misunderstanding and, and incorrect understanding that Allah is the Creator. Never you're going to go back to the Creator, you're going to back to where you came from. But the problem is you don't know where you came from so you don't know where you're going back to. So that's in their understandings of what is Allah and what is Lillah. So Arabs and Arabic people they know that Allah is with Alif, Lillah is the Alif moved and Masiwa Allah, everything other than Allah is in Lam, Lam Hay, Allah's Alif moved and that's why nothing attaches, Allah doesn't attach to anything, the Alif doesn't attach to the Lam because it's always independent, la sharik, no partner. Is the support and the power made creation, it doesn't mean you die you go back into oneness with Allah astaghfirullah, it's not anything that possible. It's completely sort of unheard of philosophy that you're going to breathe from Allah's oceans, it's no, it's not correct. And they want to interpret that way and they have and those madhab people they have that interpretation and they believe in anthropomorphism that they will go a place, they will die and they will sit and they will sit and talk to Allah. So then Allah has a location for them, Allah has a direction for them, Allah has a form for them, astaghfirullah How? How could Allah sit on something? They say, oh we thought the throne is for Allah How could, how could a, a mighty creator sit upon something? then the one he sits upon must be who's holding who. So this is not how that system works. These are expressions for people to understand once they reach marifa and maturity, they understand that Allah is the power and the servant is the one whom sits. And his, his servant is Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah is the power on the throne and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad so all these, these ways of marifa have deep, deep explanations of these oceans of power and oceans of reality when people are ready for them. If they're ready for it then Allah guides them towards realities to be dressed from an eternal reality so that they understand where they came from and they understand now where they're going to. When you understand where you're going to you can plan your course accordingly. If you're going back into that ocean then best to be familiar with that ocean, best to have the immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad and to get your rank within that ocean by your good deeds and good actions. So that Allah would dress the servant with a Divinely love, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah The haqqul yaqeen, does it come as an experience in your life or in meditation? It could be anything. Ilmu yaqeen are the knowledges of reality, so those knowledges are coming in everywhere because the seeker will see the knowledge in everything. Once they've been trained by the foundation of their shaykh, letting a foundation of knowledges, so don't go outside of this realm. You know, don't, don't make somebody to be Allah and God, don't make this to be like this, don't make shirk to be like this. He put it as a foundation for the understanding. When all that foundation is there then ilmu yaqeen and the knowledges of certainty are filling them. Ainu yaqeen is then their practices to enter in and to open their heart to their tafakkur and their contemplation into the world of light. The haqq yaqeen is then Allah makes them to experience it. Their knowledge and their practices begin to open khashf and hal and experiences. But without ilmu yaqeen the knowledge is corrupt, the understanding is corrupt because they don't have any foundation. So you built this house with what? Bamboo and you're going five stories up? Everybody can build the house, so right? Anybody can build any, any understanding they want. 
But if you're telling me you're going to build five stories up with bamboo, I tell you you're probably going to get killed because this is going to collapse on you. But when your foundation is concrete and steel, you go up one, you go up two, it can keep going. So it means that the foundation of ilmu yaqeen that you have by these authorized shaykhs, by these known tariqahs, by this way of marifa and the disciplines of these tariqahs, then they keep teaching with the foundation, the foundation, then the meditating with those foundation and Allah begins to open for them their truths and their experiences so that they know it's true. So when Allah dealt with Sayyidina Ibrahim in Qur'an that, Ya Rabbi show me how you revive the dead and Allah was asked, why? You don't believe? He said, no I believe, I want yaqeen. Why? I want to witness this process. And then take the bird and four parts and put them on four different tops of mountains and call them. And as a result he was able to call and witness how Allah took something dead and brought it to life for yaqeen. So it means you have to experience that and he wanted to experience that. And these are also the reality of what's partitioning the soul is that we've been cut into four enemies, nafs, hawa, dunya and shaitan. And a person can't be called to be whole and to follow your guidance because the shaitan is blocking him in four directions. His nafs is, nafs is going one way, his dunya is calling him a different way, his desire is calling him a different way and shaitan is calling him in a different way. So how can somebody being pushed in four different directions become whole and one? So the, all of the Qur'an has many levels of understanding, infinite levels. If anyone comes and says, it's just one level then you have limited Allah which has no limitation, has no boundary, has no understanding. Allah is infinite in capacity. It's just we are limited. When we open ourselves to become unlimited, Allah can expand the understanding, inshaAllah. That's why they say, don't be square-headed and, and live a life in which you empty your cup. Say, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and Allah can feel it at all times, more knowledge, more knowledge and you accept I'm nothing and Allah then expands the horizon and then another knowledge on top of that, another reality on top of that and has infinite in its potential. So the one whom only studies wudu just to know how much water to wash with, that's it. And he thinks that, that he understood wudu. And then he's going to read on how, how much water, how clean is the water, how many different ways can the water be contaminated <coughs> and that's it. And you think that's, that's the, the knowledge? No, but this knowledge must go very deep to why you don't tell me what's in the water? Why Allah chose water to clean you? Well because Allah said, my throne is upon water. So there must be an immense power in the attribute of water of an angelic nature and a Qudrat al-Ilahiyya, a Divinely power in which Allah wants that reality upon your being. And then later you find, ah, the water actually burns the, the jinn and burns all these negative energies on you, again another deeper. And then Allah said, oh well you're 70% water. So if you don't study what water is and you're only worried about what is making it technically clean and dirty because that's all they know of wudu. So if you put like this, this becomes dirty, you become like this, one, one, one mud of this is like this. No, it was to go deep into the knowledge of what is water, you find 70% of yourself is water. When you understood the haqqaiq of water, Allah put it within yourself that purify your own water. And how do you purify your waters with your zikr? You have to make an internal wudu. Why are you obsessed with external wudu only? The external wudu, the body is going to die. But if you learned internal wudu on how to wash your soul, wash your body, wash your heart, that lasts for all of eternity for you. So every knowledge has infinite levels of, of capacity. But these people want to be stuck on only one superficial understanding in the world of form and then they doubt everything. Oh where, where is Shaykh? Prove it, prove it. Prove what? Water? What are the elements of water and its importance? 
And how, how do you stabilize H2 and O? What kind of power is that? That it has two H and one oxygen. And if you take one H away, that's a hydrogen bomb. Means the oceans are potentially explosive. If Allah decides, fit up with you people and lift hydrogen. That's the force of water, has immense realities. So yeah, everything that the believer, if they believe, they look at, it should convey a reality. They look deeper with their heart, it should convey a reality. So tariqahs come to teach people, expand your horizon. That the infinite capacity of Divinely knowledge and Divinely realities. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Can you please tell us more about King Charles and why Shaykh Nazim had praised him? InshaAllah. <clears throat> that How to start with that one? <laughs> lot, of, lot of very bad comments from most of the things that are posted and we are our worst enemies and shaitan wants, if he gives you a long enough rope you will hang yourself. They have expression like that, right? Just keep giving you some rope and pretty now you're putting it around your head, you're tying it on the ceiling and you're gonna jump. Means you are your worst enemy, you don't need anyone else to put you into Jahannam, you put yourself into Jahannam. When awliyaullah come and they teach, they teach based on Surat Al-Kahf. When Sayyidina Khidr said, don't ask me until I tell you and don't ask from what you have very little knowledge of. Because the foresight of their knowledge and the information coming to them is not hatta dunya. So anyone who wants to judge a personality and say that, this person can never be like this because of this, whatever their subject is. And that's not Islamic and that has nothing to do with even the history of Islam. So the main importance is that because we attended the majlis of awliya and they described that there are certain personalities that will be coming for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi But I would imagine many, many immense and horrific events will happen upon the earth and they'll come into who they're supposed to be. Because you know that if you look at a charcoal, you don't see a diamond. You know, you see a stone but you know that there's an emerald if you crack that stone, there's maybe a diamond because of thousands of years of being cooked. You're trying to tell me with your superficial eyes and your limited capacity in your head, you can look at something and say what it is but you don't even know who you are, what your name is, what your capacity in Divine the Presence, what's your name in Divine the Presence? So I don't know. So how you know the name of someone else of who they are? But these awliya, this is God's gift to them. Their firasul immensely powerful. When they talk it's not from this time, we don't know what time he was looking and seeing and saying these things but said, this one is holy and his name is King Hussein and that's enough because this is the <laughs> knowledge of awliya. Then they come and make all these horrific uh, statements and they put themselves in danger because that's not Islamic history. So go back into the history of Islam and say, how many companions were fighting to kill Prophet They were entering in battles to kill Prophet Who are you to call anyone any names? And when Allah wanted to guide, one particular one was guided and he became the sword of Allah The same one who was fierce in battle killing companions and going after Prophet Allah is the one whom guides. When he wants to guide, doesn't ask anybody's advice of, I'm gonna guide this one, is this okay with you? No, 
But what Prophet taught is, be good with character, don't, don't make comments, don't backbite, just stay patient. Especially if you accompany these awliya, what knowledge is coming, it's not for the mind to understand. Whom is coming, what they did and how they're going to transform. He transformed one whom was in battle against Prophet and made the sword of Islam, the sword of Allah who conquered everyone. And we have another companion who was on his way to go and attack Prophet and by just knocking on the door Allah changed his heart. How? This Allah's miracle, the glory of Islam, the power of Islam is Allah converted everyone because of the immense light of Prophet was like a fusion. That anyone coming to, to battle and to destroy Allah would melt their hearts. And how many now people are witnessing on, on the internet, they came as enemies of Islam and Allah burned their heart and made them enter into Islam. Because Allah is the one whom can fuse, Allah is the one who can, can uh, expand the heart of the believer. And somebody who believed all their life, towards the end they enter into disbelief. You say, how can that happen? Well, it's very easy because Allah said, that one no more, they're going to disbelief. And the one all their life came to fight Islam, Allah said, now in belief. And this is the glory of Allah this is the majesty of Allah and that's what we say is the miracle of Islam, whom Allah guides is immensely miraculous. And uh, people whom have a, even a good history, Allah guides. People have whatever type of history, Allah guides. So the, the reality of guidance in these days when we start seeing e immense calamities, people will be astonished who's coming into Islam. And this is Allah's azimat, this is Allah's glory to show, you, oh, it's not what you thought or what we perceived what would be happening but it's what Allah wants. So He plays an immense role and, and many people will come, many people will go and the signs of Allah is everywhere. So these are a big sign that when the kings begin to return means the heavenly kingdom is opening. And some king is coming that is not a good one and he has a different plan. And the other kings that are coming that will submit to Allah's will and accept the love and the guidance of Sayyidina Muhammad and so alhamdulillah. And we all have to say, inshaAllah that, Ya Rabbi please send, send us good people. Not to manifest badness and say, oh no way, no way, then what, we don't want any good people coming? So this is an immense guidance and immense mercy from Allah InshaAllah make people whom have power and authority, a Divinely power and authority to be good in Islam, come towards Islam and give Islam its relief that they can take and, and uh, uphold the way of Islam inshaAllah. So it's to our own benefit inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the best cure for crippling anxiety and harshness of the heart? I think we already talked about that. That was the whole beginning talk is anxiety and depression. And, and this, this anxiety can be very dangerous and very difficult. That's why the whole connection is about uh, qudra. You know, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Qaddisullah Siru, it's Qadir and Qadiri and it's not only Qadiri is one group, all the, the shaykhs are Qadiri. The whole way is Qadiri because Prophet is an ocean of power. So it means that uh, not one, one group of people have power, they all have power. It's a Divinely power, there's a journey to the Lord of power. As a result we all need that power, we need to be energized. The more power we are able to achieve, the more deposits. Some people said, oh I understood the deposit part, if you deposit more into your account than what you spend, you'll be happy because right? your account has something in it. But if in your life you spend more than you deposit, you'll be bankrupt, you'll be in trouble. Well imagine then physical, are you putting more energy on yourself than what's being spent from you? If you're putting more you should be positive and powerful. If you put less energy upon yourself and go back and make an accounting for your day, 
you have your wudu, you did your prayers, you have your taweez, you did your meditations, you keep yourself always in a state of wudu, you do your awrad, you do your zikrs, you do your salawats, you read Qur'an, you do your dalal khirat these are all energy practices. You did all of that and you're depleted? You can't unless you're working at a nightclub. How could you be depleted from that much energy that you built? Even just walking to work is not like that. Even going to the mall you can't be depleted. So it means that there's something deficient in the practice. Oh Shaykh, yeah I don't really do those things. Well, of course if you don't do those things then the shaitan is ever present in everything and all day long depleting people. You touch the phone, we gave an example today to some people, just carry the phone and your energy force dropped. Go to your computer, your energy force dropped. But you have to have a way to recharge that with your good practices, your zikrs and all the, the things that Allah wants from you. Even in your salah and sujood is an immense leaving of negative energy. As soon as you go into sujood your forehead is depositing back into the earth all the bad energy. So it has a tremendous power. So all of these practices when we look at one daily schedule and see the discipline of one day you can determine. That's why we gave the analogy of a bank account. Somebody say, Shaykh I don't know why I just don't have money in my account. I say very easy, sit down and make a spreadsheet. What do you mean you don't know why? Oh yeah, so I spent 10 bucks on this coffee. Uh, I went randomly bought this shirt. I, I can randomly went another place and bought another thing. You have no spending control. And I keep using this plastic and, and I just uh, immediately tear up your plastic, put everything on a spreadsheet, take your paycheck and make it cash. It's very hard to spend cash because your, your, your pocket is like, 20 bucks for that? It's nothing but plastic, uh, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, make it 40 bucks. Because you're not paying, you think it's plastic until the bill comes <laughs> and you're bankrupt and you can't get out of their, their bill at 25% interest. So it means they take a, a daily accounting and make an excel sheet. Why you can't do that for your life and your spiritual life? And then you can see on a daily basis how much are you spending of energy? Oh, I went here, yeah that was there. And then after work I'll go to this place, that takes all my energy. I go here, I go to the mall, I go here. The, uh, oh, I eat that's bad food at this on, at work, and I do like this. And you see all the energy being depleted. Let's say, okay, on that same spreadsheet, what did you do good? Well, I do I wait for Thursday zikr and Friday zikr and no, nothing else. Or what did you do good? They say, oh, I made my salah, I kept my wudu, I did this, I did all the awrads, I did my dalal khirat, I read the Quran. I did all these practices, then you should have a lot in your account. So when you put it on an excel sheet and put all your good deeds and all your actions and all the practices, you should have a lot in your account. And then you should minimize the, the negative places. You can identify and say, I don't think I should go to that place anymore, they're kind of creepy, the energy is really all over the place, knock it out, take it off. Just like you would do with your expenses, do you need to have $10 a day in Starbucks? Why don't you get a coffee machine and make it at home? But if you don't write it as a discipline in life, you don't know what you're spending in life which you have to take control of, take away and cut your plastic, spend cash only. And then how do you spend your spiritual energy? Don't go there, don't do that, do more of this. Instead of going out, go sit there and do your meditation and your muraqabah. The meditation more powerful than anything else you do. Prophet described one hour tafakkur like 70 years of worship. Because if you should be able to connect and do it right, you get an immense amount of energy. Because you're entering now into an association of malakut in which that light dresses you for all of eternity. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding inshaAllah. And these are the, the blessed weekend and blessed lights inshaAllah the nazar of Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jailani Qaddasullahu Sirus, nazar be upon us, intercession be upon us. And that uh, is a deep relationship to Shahmat al Fardani, Abdul Rafu Yamani, Yusuf al Siddiq, Imam al Arafin, Lisan al Mutaqalimin, Araf Tayyar Maruf bin Murhan, Burhan al Kalam, Nqawth al Anam, Sahib al Waqt, Sayyidina Muhammad al Mahdi alayhi salam. That in these seven wazirs of Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam, that Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jalani has an immense madad upon these representatives to dress them and bless them for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi upon this earth. We pray that we be under all their nazar, 
and our families and our communities to be upon their nazar, that their knowledge is, their madad, their support, their love and their ishq to dress us and bless us inshaAllah for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad <coughs> bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.